The Celeron D, probably one of the most worthless and hated Intel processors of all time. It could be disliked because of its performance, or lack of, but I think it has a lot to do with the name. You see, Celerons have always been very cheap, low-end, low-performance ships, but the Celeron D was released around the same time as the Pentium D. And as we all know, the D in Pentium D stood for dual, so it wouldn't be much of a leap to assume that the Celeron D was just a Celeron version of the Pentium D with two dies. Nope, the Celeron D was just a regular Celeron version of the Pentium 4 with a single thread. Didn't even have hyper-threading. The Celeron D we'll be testing in this video is a 2.66 GHz model with one core and one thread. It runs natively with a 533 MHz frontside bus, and it only has 256K of L2 cache. And this will be going up against a 3 GHz Pentium 4 with the specs listed here. However, since this isn't an apples to apples comparison, the Celeron will be overclocked nearly 1 GHz, bringing the total speed up to 3.56 GHz with a frontside bus speed of 732 MHz. So will the Celeron D beat the Pentium 4 while being overclocked? I remember tons of people at the time, both in forums and real life, always saying to just buy a Celeron D and overclock it. It'll be just as fast or faster than a Pentium 4, but for a quarter of the price. And yet, that's just not true. With its extremely small amount of L2 cache, the CPU would never reliably come anywhere close to its Pentium 4 sibling, unless you overclock it to maybe 5 or 6 gigahertz. So let's take a look at Passmark first. The CPU test already shows the overclock Celeron is far behind the Pentium 4, scoring a total of 39 points lower. The memory benchmark is also a similar story. In 7-zip, the Pentium 4 finished 8 minutes sooner than its Celeron D. Cinebench was a similar story with the Celeron finishing around 27 minutes after the Pentium 4. Remember, for your money at the time, the Pentium 4 gave you a second thread, and this does help for multitasking and, well, for benchmarks. In Handbrake, both chips struggled rendering this 10 minute clip, and neither had a great score, but the Pentium 4 finished first at 3 hours 24 minutes, with the Celeron doing it in 4 hours and 39 minutes, nearly an hour and 15 minutes slower. In Unreal Tournament 3, both runs showed the CPUs locked in again at 100%. This is a multi-threaded game engine, so again, the Celeron is at a disadvantage. However, it doesn't do too bad considering, and seems to run at about 10 to 15 FPS slower than the P4 on average. The P4 though, is far smoother. GTA Vice City also ran okay. It ran about 10 to 20 FPS slower on the Celeron as it did with the Pentium 4, with the CPU again pegged at 100%. I'm not too sure if this version of the GTA is multi-threaded, as the Pentium 4 stayed around 50% usage. But even if it's not, it frees that second thread up to handle background processes for the OS, which the Celeron wouldn't be able to do. GTA San Andreas was released around the time of these CPUs, so definitely something that could have been played on either. Both CPUs were locked at 100%, and it may not seem like the Celeron did too bad trailing behind the Pentium by only 5 to 10 FPS. The input lag, though, was more than noticeable, and if I had to play this long term, it would get old really fast. One moment it wasn't so bad, and then another it felt like a full second worth of lag. GTA 4. Yeah, this was rough. Here are the settings that I always use. Neither CPU liked this, and on the P4 it kind of felt like I was playing in slow motion. The Celeron was just a slideshow. MSI claims to see 5 FPS, but that looks like 2 FPS at best. You can also see in the benchmark how poorly this game runs on either chip, but especially bad on the Celeron. Again, this is the Celeron with the 1 GHz overclock. Portal 2, as usual, ran. The Pentium 4 ran fairly smooth with the Celeron showing similar results. The Celeron ran about 20 frames per second slower and would constantly stutter and pause. Also, you'll notice the CPU never leaves 100% usage, so it's struggling pretty hard. Again, this is with a 1 GHz overclock. I tried Heaven. 
This is the clip of the benchmark loading. I started and stopped the recording between the screen fade in and fade out. As you can see, it took about a minute for the Pentium 4 to load, but the Celeron took nearly twice that long. The recordings of each of these freeze a frame before the, the fade into the actual benchmark, so this is how long you'd actually have to wait for each. Now check out the audio on the Celeron run. You'll notice that the music stops and then restarts constantly. The whole time that the benchmark ran, the Celeron again was at 100%, scoring far lower than the Pentium 4. Also, the GPU read about 100% usage on the Pentium 4, but I've gotten better results with other processors, so I believe it's at 100% because of its low bus bandwidth. Now, running the video on YouTube was similar. The Pentium 4 seemed to tolerate 480p, but the Celeron just wasn't having any of it. So you might be asking, okay, that's all well and good, but how does the Celeron perform against the Penny 4 at its stock speeds? Well, here you go. In Cinebench, you can see how much faster the overclocked version of the Celeron was. It wasn't as fast as the Penny 4, but it was a lot better than its stock speeds. The stock Celeron took nearly an hour longer to complete the benchmark and was about 30 minutes slower than its overclocked counterpart. But Handbrake, this is where it really showed its true colors. Remember, this was a 10 minute H.264 file that the Pentium 4 took three hours and 23 minutes to complete. The overclocked Celeron did it in four hours and 39 minutes. So how long do you think the stock Celeron would take? Well, it took nearly seven hours. Yes, seven hours to encode a 10 minute video. Suddenly the Pentium 4 doesn't seem too bad. I ran Y Cruncher on all three. The Pentium 4 finishes about 200 seconds or 17.6% faster than the overclocked Celeron. The stock Celeron was 41.3% slower than the Pentium 4. So the overclock definitely helped quite a bit. Benchmarks aside, even using these things in everyday life was infuriating. The computer would just randomly freeze up so much so that the mouse cursor wouldn't even move and then it would just randomly start working again, you know, 10, 20 seconds later, or a couple minutes later. I remember working on a PC with one and the user was complaining that when she selected the whole document in Word and changed the font, that the computer would freeze up for over a minute. Luckily, I had some older Penny 4s laying around and swapped it out and it fixed the problem, but it couldn't even handle large Word documents. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video taking a look back at the atrocity that was the Celeron D. If so, consider a like and subscribe as I have a lot more videos like this to come. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.